The story of OG Loke is one that many people noticed but didn't fully understand. We know he's a self-proclaimed gangster rapper and a wannabe member of the Grove Street families. But when it comes to his story, a lot of players don't understand. The relationship between him and Big Smoke. So here is a detailed analysis of the rapper known as Jeffrey. Jeffrey grew up on Grove Street in the neighborhood of Ganton where he became friends with several members of the Grove Street families, including their leader Sweet Johnson and the second in command Melvin Harris. Jeffrey couldn't physically join the families, and on top of that, neither of the leaders wanted him to join. They would instead encourage him in going to school and think about becoming someone who contributed to society rather than destroying it. But Jeffrey struggled with his identity and self-perception. During the years between 1987 and 1992, which inspired him to create the gangster rap persona of OG Loke, a hardcore gangbanger known by everyone for his involvement in petty crimes. These small criminal offenses landed him in jail for a few weeks. While incarcerated, he built his street credibility. And though it's never mentioned, one can assume that he kept in touch with Big Smoke during his time in jail. But whether this was related to his relationship with Freddy or his quest to become a gangster rapper is the real question. I'm only asking because they are key to understanding his story and role in Big Smoke's empire. Most of you probably think he's based on the rapper Ja Rule because of the wiki which is convincing since both the rapper and the character share the same first name. However, I have information that says otherwise and I hope to change your mind. Starting with real life rumors and events that have occurred. During his stay in jail, it's implied that Freddy raped him. This was the reason behind him wanting to get rid of Freddy, to protect his music career from the homosexual rumors. This is a reference to the rumor that Tupac was raped in jail sometime around February 1996. See the media, they make me act like I would act. I'm in jail, they reporting that I'm getting raped in jail. I'm sitting in jail, niggas is begging on my door going, Pac! Win! Win! Why you ain't saying that? What's going on? Talking about I got raped in jail. Ain't this a bitch. I mention this because at the time, he was gaining popularity. If a rumor like this turned out to be true, it could have caused him to fall off. This makes sense on why Rockstar would reference the situation for their gangster rapper's story. Which again, this was only a rumor. If you look at his early mugshots, you can see that he looks similar to his face, clothes, and style. Even down to the tattoo displayed on OG Loke's stomach. I can understand why some people don't want to compare the two but it's important to remember that they are different. They have their own stories that don't match up. So OG Loke is a reference that shows the rapper's drama from the streets to the studio. It focuses on important moments in his life, like the debate about whether Tupac was a real thug. Some people say he wasn't a thug because he went to school and did things outside the usual thug persona, something OG Loke also dealt with in the game. Which brings me to Big Smoke's role in OG Loke's story. Both OG Loke and Tupac faced tough situations where they needed help to get back on their feet. Tupac had people like Suge Knight stepping in to bail him out of jail and offer him a record deal at Death Row Records. In a similar way, OG Loke found his support in Big Smoke, who helped him out after his own troubles and guided him in managing his rap career, landing him a deal under Blasting Fools Records. His record deal is openly featured in the game, but Big Smoke's involvement is more subtle. If you're not looking for it or just happen to come across it, then you might miss it. In a recent press conference, your manager came to your defense. A lot of people say gangster rap is misogynistic posturing by fake ass idiots who spend more time in drama school than they ever did pimping or hustling dope. Well, I assure you, OG Loke is the real thing. He's hated women all his life. He sold drugs to school children. He's murdered innocent people just for kicks. But he rhymes like an angel, and I assure you it's all in a good cause. So either way, you can feel good about yourself listening to this music. Well, that was very informative. But going back to his story, he didn't get respect or support from anyone except CJ. CJ helped him throughout his journey by getting rid of his competition. He killed Mad Dog's manager and bodyguards and stole Mad Dog's rap book, which had all his hit songs. This caused Mad Dog to fall into a deep depression and fall off completely, ending up in debt and losing his home to a Vago named Big Papa. A part of OG Loke's conditions when he was released was set by his parole. 
which assigned him a job at Burger Shot. He started working as a crew member, but once his rap career took off, he would quit his job and throw a house party. Hey, fuck you, man! And I don't care what you heard, I ain't nobody's ass technician, bitch! Hey, hey, what's up, Lo? Technician ain't gangster. That's what's up. I heard that. Listen, Carl, if I'm going back to a cell, I want to have a big party first. This may be my last chance to get home. Okay, so what's the plan? Well, I'm going to slide back over to Grove Street and get those sounds boom-bastic fantastic. All right, so what you want me to do? I want you to get ready for the party and get some girls, man. Okay. Get some real fly girls, yeah. you know what I'm saying? The ones in the bikinis and uh -huh. shit, in the videos. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I told you, brother, I'm the chronicle of our struggles. The voice of the families, like Moses, only keeping it real. You said it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Where the night ended, with the ballers showing up and shooting up the party and ambushing the Grove Street families. It was clear that someone close to CJ and Sweet set them up. But the question what, 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 is who? who, 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 who. While the party seemed like a failure at first, it actually pushed OG Loke into the spotlight, making him even more famous. During his rise in fame, he would abandon Carl Johnson. But by doing this, not only did he hurt his relationship with CJ and Sweet, he would also break his parole. He didn't tell his parole officer or ask to change jobs. Instead, he just quit his assigned work and got involved in a gang shootout. This could have sent him back to jail for breaking his parole, but it's likely that Jeffrey wouldn't have cared since he was focused on selling America a lie. Come on, Laszlo. You know OG ain't no playboy. I ain't down with that shit. It ain't gangster. I walk the walk. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Fresh. Yo, I'm, I'm down. <laughs> I'm into walking too, but I was thinking maybe we could have a break off, you know? I could spit on my back. You being funny? I'm trying to be. Watch it, fool. I warn you. I got the streets. I got a rep. Me and my man Smoke, we took over. I've been gangbanging since I was three. Ice cold killer. Excuse me, gangbanging? <laughs> I never understood that. I mean, other guys in the room while you're... Ugh. I'm ice cold, bitch. Don't make me dump on you, G. I'm the streets, man. I am gangster. I'm taking rap in a whole new direction. From now, it's about making words rhyme. And I'm going toe-to-toe -to -toe with you in a minute. Why do you rappers get so worked up? You're rich. You've won. Stop shooting at each other. You know, and you keep saying, home from the streets. Well, you know what, dude? Everyone has a street in front of their house. That doesn't make you cool. Oh, we got a comedian, huh? But what you just heard was OG Loke and Big Smoke going on tour and doing interviews to get more attention. Big Smoke would use OG Loke's image to make quick money and hide his drug operations by using the rap industry. Using Mad Dog's rhyme book, he recorded his first and only album, Straight From The Streets. He would also team up with Victim to distribute his clothing brand, Locked Down. The brand's name and logo featuring a handcuff was a direct reference to his time in prison. The two were glorifying the gangster lifestyle, making it seem appealing with statements like this. And I assure you it's all in a good cause. So either way, you can feel good about yourself listening to this music. But while OG Loke was living the dream, his nightmare began to take shape. His former hitman turned on him helping the very man OG Loke had once tried to bring down. This sparked the return of Mad Dog, who regained his confidence, got back into the studio, and started releasing hits again. But it all started when Mad Dog and CJ decided to pay a visit to OG Loke. They had heard he was filming a music video in Flint County, and it was the perfect opportunity to settle the score. As soon as they spotted him, they took off after him. Determined to lose them, OG Loke drove as fast as he could, but they managed to chase him all the way back to Blasting Fool's records in Los Santos. He was then forced to hand over the rhyme book and all the money he made from the album. Ain't that right, Alki? You ain't no artist. You's a buster. You's a fake. Man, I was gonna give you credit on the next album. Man, royalties? Take that. I got oh, more bitch, too. Bitch, I should smack dog <laughs> shit out your ass. The label also decided to take another look at OG Loke's position within the company and consider signing Mad Dog to a deal under the label. Mad Dog now had the backing of San Fierro's most powerful crime organization, along with the support of CJ and the Grove Street families, so nobody could destroy Mad Dog's career. Plus, Big Smoke was killed off, leaving OG Loke without any support and broke as a joke. Without any money, he couldn't return to the rap game, at least in the 3D universe's timeline. This is backed up by a blog owner named Big Smilky 
in 2004 who said he disappeared without a trace after one poorly received record. This was on the Forgotten Legends of West Coast Rap website. This was a promotional website for the game. And in 1998, during Liberty City Stories, there's no mention of OG Loke's album, but Mad Dog's albums are advertised on billboards around Liberty City. This suggests that after his run-in with Mad Dog, OG Loke tried to release an album, but it flopped. He also got sued by the label over ownership rights, and his parole violation likely caught up with him too, leaving OG Loke to fade into nothing more than just a memory. OG Loke shows how wanting fame can ruin your life. He really wants to be a famous rapper, so he steals Grove Street's identity, thinking this is the way to get noticed, just to end up alone and living with a life filled with regrets. But either way, OG Loke is the GOAT, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. But now, let me know your thoughts on this video about Grove Street.